I'll note your chief engineer. Make sure sea valves are checked in place and tightened. Aye, aye, sir. What's all this rigging along the ship's side? Why isn't it cleared away? Well, I believe that's the new arresting gear, sir, and it the narrow launching base. Oh, well, make sure. No, 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 I better keep my nose out of it. After all, she won't be mine until she's launched and commissioned. I don't think they'd mind if I checked, sir, even though she isn't officially ours yet. Ours, Mr. Briggs? Uh, sorry, sir. You may get a new assignment, you know. I hope not, sir. A good man at sea, Briggs. Thank you, sir. Wouldn't surprise me if you were airplane officer. Wouldn't surprise me if you uh, were a lieutenant commander soon. Really, sir? Well, another year, maybe. No need to rush things. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. But in the immediate future, it wouldn't surprise me if you got that leave to go to... Uh... San Diego, sir. Oh, yes, yeah. San Diego. Blonde or brunette? Redhead, sir. Mm. Name of? Burnside. Cynthia Burnside. Burnside. Must be Army. No, sir, Navy. Mm -hmm. Intentions honorable? Well, it all depends on the nature of the opposition. I'll take a tip from a man who's been through many a maneuver. Hold your fire till you get in close. Yes, sir. Fine ship. Yes, the finest you've ever commanded, sir. She'll be named for a French brig, the Vengeance. Sailed with John Paul Jones. I hope they have the decency tomorrow to launch it with French champagne. We have no control over that, sir. Oh, we can provide the champagne. Well, I was under the impression that the Bureau of Yards and Docks would... Uh... Mr. Briggs, they built us a fine ship. This ship is a lady. You don't ask a lady to bring champagne to her own launching, do you? Well, technically speaking, sir, I... Briggs, you've never spoken technically to a lady in your whole life. As a gesture of appreciation, we're supplying French champagne for the launching. Aye, aye, sir. One quart of French champagne. Quart, my eye. This carrier displaces 40,000 tons. You don't launch your vessel that size with a quart, do you? Very well, sir. Two quart size, a magnum. Mr. Briggs, of a little crew of Frenchmen and a dinghy with 12 pop guns, of a little outfit like that can make sail for John Paul Jones, we can certainly salute them with a magnum of their own champagne. Get it. Now, sir? Now. Aye, aye, sir. One magnum coming up. Lady, you're going to see with a hangover. <laughs> Afternoon. M. Fernandez at your service. Well, this gentleman. Oh, you first. Well, you were really here before. Quite all right. You win, lady. What do you want? A large bottle of champagne. That's funny, me too. Really? A quart? That's fine. Mm. May I make a suggestion? A magnum is twice as big. As a quart? Sure. Wait. Make that a magnum, if you will. Two magnums. Two? Yeah, that's what I came for. Well, thanks for the thought. Well, all right. How's about you each take a pair of quarts? Same quantity, twice as much bottles. Oh, no, that's not the idea. No, it wouldn't be the same at all. Oh, magnum size, haven't you got any? No. <laughs> Look, you each take quarts and carry one under each arm, a balance. Well, thanks anyway. Some other store. Magnum. Not since 1939. 38. Allow me. Thank you. Well, taxi. Oh, just a minute. As long as you're after the same thing. Well. If you let me pay half the fare. Oh, no. Oh, no, no then I couldn't. Sure you could, lady. Get in. Where to? Wine shop. Biggest in town. This is so nice of you. I'd have gone and got one of those little quart bottles. Might as well do things big. You can see how important it is. Marjorie Dawson, Mark Hopkins Hotel, San Jose. Oh, I'm Briggs. Dudley Briggs. How do you do? Happy to meet you. Marty, meet me nine o'clock train with biggest bottle of champagne in San Francisco and I will marry you. Torchy. Isn't that wonderful? You mean you'd marry a guy who would send you a telegram like that? Well, what's the matter with it? Meet me with biggest bottle of champagne and I will marry you. Sounds like he's doing you a favor. Well, he is. In just about three hours and 20 minutes. Torchy. Torchy McNeil. Should I know him? You mean to say you've never heard of the Oregon earthquake? Archie McNeil, the greatest back since Ernie Pinkert. University of Oregon, the Rose Bowl. See? Who's Ernie Pinkert? The greatest back since Ernie Nevers. Say, where do you come from? Massachusetts. <laughs> Congratulations, lady. You're getting the greatest passing and blocking back ever developed on the Pacific coast. Don't I know it? Thank you. 
Tossing a football around with a war on. Why isn't Torchy in uniform? He is. Well, folks, what's it going to be? A young lady with like a magnum and French champagne. Killed? Not necessarily. And I'd like one too, please. Oh, another magnum, please. Mm -hmm. Killed? Not necessarily. Uh, tell me, folks, does this place look like a museum? Yes. yes. Well, I haven't had a magnum in this place in two years. And if you find one in San Francisco, <laughs> I'm a pickled owl. You mean there aren't any? Oh, but there must be. Are you trying to insinuate that I am a pickled owl? My gosh, I am. There is. A magnum? French? Yes. Wordley's place on Maiden Lane. It's in his window. One? All just the... Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. No hurry. Hey, hey! Come in! Hurry, that pen is drunk! You're lucky. I was just about to close. I bet there isn't another French magnum west of Denver. 12, 13, 14. Uh, 1498. I'll give you a check for the rest. Cash on the barrel head. Here you are. I'll take it. 1498. Now, wait, I'm first. Give you 50 bucks for it. Sorry, Colonel. OPA ceiling price is 1498. 98. There. That's yours, miss. <laughs> There you are. Thank you. Allow me. Thank you. Nice afternoon. Carry a bottle for you? Give you a hundred dollars for it. You talk like a rich civilian. I'll give you two hundred dollars for it. Honeymoon in Del Monte, all expenses paid. Oh, she's only going to be here tonight, tomorrow. Why are you so anxious to get this? It's to launch a ship. You mean waste this good champagne on a boat? Like a 40,000 ton carrier's on a boat, it's a ship. Are you an American? Well, I guess so, unless Oregon has seceded. Well, this is an American ship built to carry American planes and men. Now, would you let them down? Go get some American champagne. But she's being named for a French warship that sailed with John Paul Jones. Jones was American. Look, you don't get the sentiment behind this. Do you know that in the Civil War, the USS Shamrock was launched with a bottle of Irish whiskey? Well, there's your cue. Launch yours with a bottle of French dressing. Oh, my hat! Won't it ever stop rolling? I'll get it. the ship. Launching is when you give it luck. Stop waving the flag. This champagne is going to my wedding. My first and only. Oh, look at that hill. Keeps getting higher. My ears just popped. Well, why don't we walk down the hill? It's easier. Get some dinner and take a cab up. Dinner? Yes, it's six a little after. Chop suey down there. Yes, but you're a stranger and I'm getting married. Well, what's wrong with that? You're not marrying the stranger. Well, it just doesn't seem right. Does it? Look, I'm inviting you for chop suey, not the tunnel of love. Well, it wouldn't be right to become a bride in an empty stomach. 
my shame before? Torchy. I mean, where? Against Wyoming. Torchy 62, Wyoming nothing. Oh, yes. Then, in the Montana game, that was the next Saturday, Torchy threw a forward pass that bounced on the goalpost so he caught his own forward pass and beat the Grizzlies 54 to nothing. One forward pass. And other things. Against State Teachers College, he kicked 12 straight field goals. Who won? Torchy. I mean, we. Oregon. Tell me, what did he do to win you? Nothing. I won him. Lucky. Let's dance the good old Torchy, huh? No harm in dancing, is it? Oh, no, no. Waiter. Would you take the champagne for me, please? I know you'd rather dance with the Magnum, Lieutenant. You dance well, Lieutenant. Well, thank you, Margie. Torchy doesn't, the lovable ox. Well, he can't have everything. He almost did. For two years, he was engaged to Beverly Billings, that Senator Billings' daughter, and that was nice because Torchy's in highway construction. Oh, solid rock Torchy. But Senator Billings wasn't re-elected, so then Torchy went with Winona Krantz. Senator Krantz's daughter? The president's daughter. <laughs> I mean, the president of Northern Cement Company. Oh, oh, that president, huh? Looked like I was going to lose Torchy for sure. But Mr. Krantz sold out and went in the lumber business. Poor Torchy, always playing the wrong hunches. Then... I know, then along came you, the real thing. No, Sloan Curb and Highway Corporation. Thought she never leaves the road, does he? That, that Rita Sloan. Rita Sloan? We don't like her at all. So underhanded, she knew I'd been waiting for Torchy to find himself. Or you. The minute I left town to visit my aunt in Clackamas County... I beg your pardon? My aunt, my father's sister, she raises apples same as my father. Clackamas County is very good apple country. Oh. Well... The minute I left town, this Rita Sloan took over. Sounds like quite a bitch. Why do you say that? Well, why do you hate her? Because she's quite a dish. But I got my chance. Torchy was drafted. <laughs> oh, he'd love the way you say that. Oh, wait a minute. I'll have to meet Torchy at the station in 20 minutes. I want to show you something. Lieutenant Briggs, the dinner was lovely, you danced divinely, and now if you'll excuse me, I'll never see you again. Please. That's please. Lee Briggs, if you're going to destroy my faith in the American Navy. They call this Portsmouth Plaza. You know why? To remember Robert Louis Stevenson. See that flagpole over there? Yes. That's where they raised the first American flag over San Francisco. You know who raised it? Robert Louis Stevenson? Sailors of the USS Portsmouth. Oh, Portsmouth Plaza. Yes, in 1840 something. Fighting men of the United States Navy. And tomorrow at dawn, we're going to launch the ship that's going to raise the American flag over Tokyo. I hope so. You really do? In the name of the United States Navy, I'm asking you to remember your wedding champagne as the bottle that launched the ship that raised the stars and stripes over Tokyo. Well, if it's all right with Torchy. We thank you, Margie. You shouldn't have done that. That was for 130 million Americans. Let's go meet Torchy. Just think, it's been two whole years. In his last letter, he said he'd raised a moustache. That's better than just sitting around. Are you scared? Of torture? No, marrying a guy in two hours you haven't seen for two years. What if you discover you don't love him? Don't see her. I don't see her anywhere. I should probably run around with them home guard Romeos. Fine talk, after all the time torture sweated it out. Oh, boy. San Francisco. Women. Hey! Hey, Margie! <laughs> My name's Cutler. 
Mine's Briggs. After 16 months in the illusions. Wow! Oh, two minutes! Two minutes and he's already found him a native woman. Margie, this is Buck, Goose, and Mitch. Hello, How man. George, he's written me so much about all of you, it's like old friends. Yeah, we were glad when he studied up with you that Rita Sloan sent Torchy nothing but regards. Oh, this is Lieutenant Briggs. Uh, he's in the Navy. Really? Friend of Margie's, sir? Friend of the bridegroom's, too, I hope. Oh, <laughs> glad to know you. Hey, now, uh, champagne! Oh, Hello, Hey, 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 Look, Mr. McNeil, how about a deal? Big bottle for the ship, two quarts for the wedding. Lieutenant, you and the boys and myself are going to drink a little toast to Margie with this bottle. The skipper can go uh, <coughs> bust a pint. Come on, fellas. But listen, I... You see? You think it was in enemy territory. Come on, Margie. seen one of these in ages. They're a great help. I wish there was something I could do. You could leave the room for about five seconds. Thought you'd never forgive me. Ah, ah, there you are, ma'am. All iced and ready for nature to take its course. Thanks, I will. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Leave it to the Navy to do things right, sir. I only hope the rest of the Navy's doing better than I am. <laughs> Would you try torture just once more? No use. But there must be a soft spot somewhere in that hulk. I beg your pardon. Hey, honey, what time will that fellow be here to marry us? Any minute. Look, naked as a jaybird. <laughs> well, I guess it's no use hanging around any longer. Sorry I can't wait to see you get married. You leaving? I have to report back to the skipper on failure of a mission. Well, it's not your fault there's a war on and French magnums are hard to get. Try and tell that to your superior officer. Well, best of luck. Thanks. It was swell meeting the Navy. I'll drink a special little toasty from this bottle. I'm afraid you won't. Why not? Because in the name of the Navy, I hereby Shanghai the bottle. Oh, Torchy! He's got the bottle! Hey, catch! I should bust this ball right over your head. At least, I've been a very bad boy. And whatever made you think you could get a forward pass by Torchy McNeil? Oh, ignorance, lack of reading the papers, I suppose. Well, from now on, will you please be kind enough to stay out of my wedding? Welcome, McNeil. And stay out of my hair! Wickley speaking. I'll see you in the morning, Captain. Right, and thanks for the use of the office. Mr. Briggs, sir, he's managed to locate the only magnum of French champagne in San Francisco. 
Will you kindly remind Mr. Briggs that the launching is to be at dawn? But he says his champagne's about to be used at a wedding. Our Magnum? Give me that phone. Right, Briggs! Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll try, sir. I mean, I'll get it somehow, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, yes, Miss Sloan. Your room number is... Just a moment. Sloan, Sloan, Sloan. Now, here you are, Miss Sloan. Sign here, please. Sloan? Rita Sloan? Show Miss Sloan the 1242. Yes. Rita Sloan from Oregon. Well, well. Why, yes, but, um, I can't quite... A Briggs, Dudley Briggs. Oh. Uh, Lieutenant, isn't it? Yes, so the hours I've spent listening to Torchy raving about Raider Sloan. Do you know Torchy McNeil? <laughs> know him while we're practically amphibious. Oh, boy, take Miss Sloan's bags up to her room. She'll be up in a minute. Do you know where Torchy is? Right to the very minute. Then he is in town. Uh-huh. Oh, I'd heard indirectly that he was coming to San Francisco. Oh, lady, how, how that man goes for you. Really? Oh. Oh. He's so, so sort of backward about some things that you can't really tell. Yeah, I know. Go silent, Torchy. You know, I wrote to him in the Aleutian several times, but sometimes he answered and sometimes he didn't. Uh-huh. That's why I decided I'd better come and see him. Rita, may I call you Rita? Of course. Uh, who, who did you say you are? Briggs, Dudley. Of course, Dudley. Rita... From the time Torchy left Oregon, every moment of his living life has been dedicated to you. What a faithful hunk of stone. Oh, it's hard to believe. Uh, didn't he ever mention uh, Margie? Margie? Margie, Margie, Margie. Margie who? Oh, a girl from back home, you wouldn't know her. But where is he? Where can I find him? Aha! You just leave everything to me. We're going to arrange this reunion in style, top of the mark. Wonderful! Dudley, you're quite a man. Top of the mark, please. Thank you. We'll order in a moment. Now, will you excuse me? I'll go dig up your pride and joy. You know I'm actually frightened. It's been two whole years. Torch, you'll fix that. See you in a minute. I use your household. Yes, sir. Oh, the justice of the peace. I'll take your thing. I've been a mighty busy man tonight. This war speeded up weddings faster than Liberty Ship. Hello? Who? Uh, Barton, photographer for the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, the sports editor heard you were in town and asked me to come up and get a picture. Oh, you want a picture of me and the bride? Oh, no, not the bride. Uh, this is for the sports section. Probably run it all over the country. You know, football hero now, real life hero. Oh, I'm not exactly what you call a hero, just digging those airstrips. <laughs> I'm all set up for the picture on top of the mark. Right in your hotel. Good background to San Francisco. Can you come up right away? Oh, that can wait for a minute. I have to make an early addition. Why, sure. No time at all. Right. I mean, there's a photographer upstairs. Let's get a picture right away. Oh, good. How do I look? Fine, but he just wants a picture of me. You mean a wedding picture of the groom alone? Not wedding, sports. Oh. So if you'll excuse me. Young man, I have four more weddings before midnight. Go ahead, Georgie. We'll keep him fenced in. Be right back, Pollard. Well, my relatives know how I look anyway. His name is Lieutenant McNeil. I'll point him out to you. When he comes, simply leave him at that lady's table right there. See that lady with a thing in her hat? You sure it's all right, sir? Most patriotic thing you could do. Here he comes. Hurry up. Pardon me. Lieutenant McNeil, sir? Right. This way, please. Well. Of all people. Well. Gosh, read it. Torchy. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, I loved it. This war has removed a lot of conventions. Yeah. 
It's a man I'm supposed to see up here, a photographer. Oh, so that's how he got you here. Got me here? <laughs> Still the same old bewildered torture. Honestly, you don't realize how you miss a man like you until after he's gone. You really miss me? Till it hurt. I, I didn't know that. You never did anything but write. Madam? Of Manhattan. You? No, uh... Same. I'm quite aware, Miss Dawson, that this is probably the most important night in your life. But there are several other young ladies waiting for me to make them legal. Well, I'm just as anxious as you are to get this thing finished, but you know as well as I that it takes two. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Marty Dawson speaking. This is a waiter from the top of the mark. Lieutenant McNeil says you will be slightly delayed on account of having a drink with Miss Rita Sloan. Rita Sloan? You mean to tell me that... Thank you, please. I'm very busy. Hello? 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 If I'm not too inquisitive, oh, just... Now what? We don't know. We ain't seen a woman in months. May I... Never mind, please. I'm looking for someone. Lovely view, isn't it? Perfect. Well, Margie Dawson. <coughs> Hello, Rita. Haven't seen you since the Clackamas County Apple Festival. Uh, Margie, you won't believe it. I'm going to tell you. But... That's a great start. Am I in the middle of something? Hasn't he told you? I just barely had time to kiss Rita. I see. Well, then I'd better tell Rita. By all means. Well, it's a very ordinary story, Rita. It happens every day. Torchy and I were downstairs waiting to be married. Married? But the phone rang and thought she left, so finally I came up here to see why. Now I see. Well, honey, you're making it sound terrible. Why didn't you say something about the picture? Tell me, what about the picture? Well, the fellow's just... That's right, the picture. Well, his editor told him to tell me. The least you could have done, Torchy, was to let me know about Margie. I hate to make a fool of myself. It seems the lieutenant feels he's quite a man with the ladies. Good thing to know. Makes a woman decide to be a little bit more sure next time. What do you mean, next time? I mean, this time is off. And next time there won't be a man named Torchy McNeil. Nice to have met both of you. Wait a minute, Torchy. Don't you know anything about women? You'll only make things worse. Give her a few minutes to cool off. Gosh, Rita. One minute I'm on top of the world, the next minute my whole life is ruined. Drink your drink. That's what men do. Ladies cry over their knitting. Don't get impatient, Doc. It's not me that gets impatient, it's my customers. Calm down, White Father. Oh, oh, our big bottle baby back again, eh? What do you want? Oh, I, I just dropped back for the wedding. In a minute, there isn't going to be any wedding. Gentlemen, you may have forgotten, but there's a war on. We would know. We have been in the illusion. I'm about to bid you farewell. Oh, no. Oh, you know, I have to fight my way out of here. Please, men, let the justice go. There's been a slight change in plans. What I mean to say is, no wedding. No wedding? No wedding? Not tonight, thank you. I've just seen how the other half lives. There'll be a $5 delivery charge. What did you deliver? Myself. Oh, we seem to be paying. It's a pleasure. Bless you. But mind you, what happened? Where's Torchy? The last time I saw him, he was fumbling it past. And now, if you'll excuse me. But Margie, isn't there anything we can do? You and Torchy are such nice guys. Thank you, but right now, Torchy is busy with another nice guy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
anything sacred to you? Hello? Papa! What are you doing in Sacramento? No, I wasn't talking to Torchy. It's a Navy lieutenant. A sailor. What are you doing in Sacramento? No, we aren't married. There's been a little trouble. Oh, Papa, of course not. No, you can't talk to Torchy because he isn't here. No, there's no reason to come to San Francisco. Oh, he's just a sailor. I met him in a store. Are the apples all picked, Papa? A liquor store. Oh, for Pete's sake, Papa, of course not. Please, Papa, everything's going to be all right. I was talking about a bottle. A bottle. Yes, Papa. I'll get him out right away. You better leave, Briggs, without the bottle. Apples all picked? This is no time to be funny. Aside from all the other trouble, my father thinks I've discarded Torchy for a strange sailor on my wedding night. Yeah, I'm sorry, Margie. I'm sorry for what's happened to a swell girl. Well, I'm not sorry. It's better to find out a few things in time. And what things? Never mind. Please go, Briggs. Look, Margie, you must be sick and tired of the Navy, and of me, too. And the things I do to get that bottle of champagne. But since you're not going to need it for the wedding, Who's I... Who's not going to need it? But the wedding's called off, isn't it? For tonight. You mean you're going to marry that lug after what he... whatever he did do? Well, of course. But first, I'm going to teach him to keep his mind on me. <laughs> what about me, with a launching at dawn and no bottle? I've got my own problems now. Good night. May I ask why you didn't knock, Lieutenant McNeil? Do you think all women are without principle? May I ask what he's doing in here? This is the USO, and I'm the hostess. Ah, oh, gee, Margie, I'm sorry, but what could I do? All of a sudden she saw me, and then before I knew what was happening, she kissed me, and... She kissed you, right on her lips with your helpless mouth. And then she said something about some drinks, and, uh... Why don't you get out of here, Navy? This good man happens to be my guest. Thank Lieutenant. you, Marty. Well, you think I'm going to stand here and make a goon of myself in front of a stranger? You did it upstairs in front of a room full of strangers. And for the last time, maybe, will you get out of my room? Your room? Well, isn't this my room? Well, it is if I sleep in the street. Must I remind you, Lieutenant, that we still aren't married and this room is registered in my name only? Gosh, I'm so mixed up, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Hey! Where's all the fellas and where's that guy who's going to marry you? Gone. While you were making hay with Rita Sloan? Hey, she said. And will you lay off that Rita Sloan business? Certainly, Lieutenant McNeil. I didn't mean to belittle your Rita Sloan business. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date with Lieutenant Briggs at the Navy. That I won't stand for. Where are you taking me, Lieutenant? Well, I should think to Richmond to launch a carrier, I still hope. Oh, the Navy never gives up, does it? Well, I'll take it along, just in case. My champagne, after 16 months in the illusion. Your champagne? That I found the only magnum of. And paid for with my own money. Torchy, sometimes you sound like the wrong man. Rita, Margie just walked out on me. Oh, well, let me be the first to congratulate you. Sit down and finish your drink. But this is a crisis. Come on, you've got to square me. Will you explain one thing to me? Why did Briggs tell me that you... Don't mention Briggs to me. That guy's nothing but trouble. You see, I don't understand. You want me to square you with her? Well, if you don't, she'll never marry me. She won't? Well, in that case, Torchy, I can only repeat, sit down and finish your drink. Keep looking around like somebody was after you. Somebody better be if he knows what's good for him. I'd walk out on this stooge job if I didn't, well, if I didn't like you so much. You mean if you didn't like my champagne? Here you are, sir. Don't tell anybody that a naval officer and an angry-looking girl have gone to the Richmond Ferry, unless he offers you a dollar. Hello, Wickley. Is your man still around? Briggs calling again, sir. He should have been here hours ago with that champagne. Hours ago. Hello, Briggs. I'm still trying, Captain Hornby. I'm with the bottle, but the bottle is still with this girl, Margie Dawson. You mean to tell me that a grown man with your reputation 
can't get a bottle of champagne away from a woman with a simple American name like Margie Dawson? I've tried everything, sir. Everything short of murder. Well, what are you waiting for? Maybe if I had a little assistance, sir. Someone would try and help talk her out of it. We're just about to catch the ferry for Richmond. Mr. Briggs, you have a mission. I'm relying on you to have that magnum of champagne here for the launching at dawn. Aye, aye, sir. And you will recall, Mr. Briggs, that you are relying on me to approve a leave. Need I say more? No, sir. Not another word. I don't know what's come over that boy. He used to be able to wrap three women around his fingers at once. He could, sir. Get me shore patrol. I are, sir. I see it isn't only the Navy that never gives up. Well, I guess he just hasn't been able to find a taxi. Or he just hasn't been able to tear himself away from Rita Sloan. Excuse me, do you mind? You've got a nerve. Well, this is a matter of life or death. I've got to catch a girl before she gets to the Navy Yard. Well, she's that kind of a girl. Don't think she's worth catching. Wonder Richmond. Good to be back at sea again. Look! Yes. Do you mind if I take advantage of his suspicious nature? Even Stooges get a break. Does he see us? Uh oh, he's blowing flame through his nose and coming right at us. Put your head close to mine. Now listen while I whisper. Look, if you want to get results, you better let me do the whispering. If there were a door in front of you, I'd knock. Oh, it's the lieutenant. What happened to your girlfriend? She isn't my girlfriend. Well, drop her on again soon, huh? Margie, I've got to talk to you. Well, I'm rather busy with another lieutenant, Lieutenant. Please don't call me Lieutenant. You ashamed of being in the Army, son? Why don't you go rent a rowboat, Navy? Margie, can I talk to you alone, please? Well, uh, will you excuse us for a moment, Dudley? Dudley? Certainly, dear, I trust you. Like me to hold that heavy old bottle for you? Hmm? Well, said you had something to tell me? Yeah. What was the idea of chasing off with that guy and making me look like a clown? Was it the way you looked that bothered you, torture? You? you know what I mean. Bruce and the guys think a lot of me, and it's sort of embarrassing. Well, I didn't mean to embarrass you, torture. I just wanted to make you feel the way I did when you chased off with Rita. Margie, you had that all wrong. The sports editor of the Chronicle wanted to take a picture, and he just didn't show up, that's all. But Rita did. Yeah. A guy can't say hello to an old friend he hasn't seen in two years. Huh? Well, it isn't really that bothers me, Torchy. No? I almost wish it were. The fact that you can run off to be photographed five minutes after we meet, and now... You mean I should have said no to the Chronicle? Is that awfully unreasonable? Well, Margie, the Chronicle is my biggest booster. First year I made All-American, they gave me a great big silver cup. Well, maybe I'm being petty, Torchy. I don't mean to be. It's just that I didn't think our first day would be, well, like this. Well, the day isn't over, honey. Hey, that's him, all right. Yeah. I was in the Rose Bowl when he made that long pass. Well, then, Torchy, let's pretend that you're just getting off I the train. I remember. And I... Two yards against Stancy. The greatest play I ever saw. Must have big hands to pass like that. You know, uh, Harvey of California had very big hands. I uh, It's not the size of the hands. It's the, the way you snap the ball, see? Like this. And, uh, of course, accuracy is just as important as distance. Now, if I'd thrown it, say, uh, say, 90 yards, would we have scored if the ball didn't drop right in a Chanix hand? You know, uh, people don't think about that. Well, if it isn't Mr. Dawson's little girl, Margie. Hello. Say, whatever happened to that fellow we used to know? What's his name, the man you're engaged to? Oh, well, he just met a few old friends. He'll be back in a minute. Oh. Well, I guess you know what my next question is going to be. Yes, I know. The bottle. Look, Margie, I don't want to be a bore, but it isn't for me. It's for the Navy. 
You see, our captain looks upon this magnum as good luck for the carrier. And if it does nothing more for him and the crew, but give them a little more confidence. Now, like uh, Gonovitz wanted me to kick. But I said, uh... Hold this. All right, Navy, sail away. Please, Dudley. Aye, aye, sir. You sort of like that guy, don't you? Yes, I do like him. The guy has no business hanging around with a girl who's engaged. Well, the guy who's engaged to her has torch here. Yeah, well, I don't like him. You shouldn't either. All he cares about is that champagne. Well, let's give it to him and not see him anymore. Oh, no, not in a million years. Well, he won't be giving it to Briggs. It'll be giving it to the Navy. Look, the Magnum is ours. It's not my fault that there isn't any more. Is that your argument? That's my decision. Well, gee, honey, you can't have two quarterbacks. If you know me at all, you know that I... I don't know you, Torchy. I thought I did. Anyway, the kind of marriage I believe in has two quarterbacks. So you can take the bottle and keep it. It is completely and officially yours. Now you can celebrate all by yourself. Please go away, Briggs. You don't have to follow me around anymore. Torchy has the champagne. You know, it's a curious thing. When my father met my mother, she didn't have a magnum of champagne to her name. But he married her anyway. I'm a lot like my father. You know, Margie, when I first met you in that wine shop, you know what I thought? I thought there is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. But she's probably not very bright. I didn't think anyone that lovely could have a brain, too. Then, while we were talking in the cab, it, it hit me like that. I thought it was a kind of a miracle. But out of a world of two billion people, that's 2,000 million, I should meet the one girl I've been looking for. What brought this on, Briggs? I told you I didn't have the champagne. But Margie, please believe me. I never felt like this before. I'm on the level, really. You see, you can't chase a girl around all day and half the night without learning something about her. Either to dislike her or think a lot about her. And you know, there isn't one thing about you that doesn't enchant me. Your voice, the gleam in your eyes, the way you comb your hair, your perfume, the smile on your lips. your lips. Margie, I'm going to tell you something. You've got to believe it. I'm in love with you. What's the idea of kissing him? Oh, don't be a cad, Miss Neal. I was kissing her. Oh. Well, now, you see how a thing like that can happen, Margie? I understand about Rita Sloan. It isn't quite the same, Torchy. Well, end of the line. We've reached Richmond. Hey, wait. What about me? Hey, Margie! Whoa! Hey, Margie! Hey, Margie! Margie! You know what just happened? All of a sudden, I realize that this bottle belongs to Navy. There speaks a man with a heart of gold. Lieutenant Briggs, much as you have given me a personal pain in the neck, I hereby present you with this magnum. Take it and get out of our lives. Wait a minute, Torchy. You said our lives. Yes, yours and mine. But, Margie, I... Torchy, an awful lot of things have happened in the last Look, few minutes. Look, there's no use getting into a long discussion. You wanted to give the bottle to the Navy, Lieutenant McNeil, and the Navy is happy to accept. Not so fast, Popeye. You mean to tell me that kiss was in the up and up? You really like this guy? Yes, I really like this guy. Yeah, we all like each other. We're all friends, aren't we? Oh, no, you don't. You don't get my girl and the bottle. Why, well, I'd rather see my mother take in Washington than give up this bottle now. Oh, if you'd only kept quiet one minute longer. Had my fingers on it. It is the champagne that's important. Oh, no, no, Margie, I... sir. Right. 
this Miss Dawson? Yes, why? We have orders, sir, to pick up Lieutenant Briggs and also Miss Dawson. Why, this is ridiculous. Well, what did I do? What did I do? You can't arrest me. I'm a civilian. That's what I'm here for. Uh, let's go, sir. Clear away, please. Clear away. There must be spies. Yeah, could be. down from Sacramento when I found out there was trouble. Trouble? My daughter. Did she get married all right? Well, I, I really don't know, sir. Is she a guest? Don't you know your own people here? Well, there's, there's so many of them, sir, in and out. Dawson, Dawson. Oh, yes, sir. General Clark. I better call first. Wedding night. Room <laughs> 1004, please. Dawson's room? Yeah. Is Margie there? No. She isn't? Where is she? How would I know? Something wrong, sir? My daughter. What's happened to her? You take this uniform off. What do you got? Successful businessman. And before that, what? A celebrity. The Oregon earthquake. A woman who betrays a man like me is washed up for good. One guy you can't kick around. That's old Torchy McNeil. Some gender to send it. I used to pour in ashes and cold water. <sighs> Here. Now, before you say a word, Mr. Dawson. Who are you talking to? Uh, me? Me. Where is my daughter? Uh, nothing to worry about, Mr. Dawson. She was... What are you doing in Margie's robe? Well, I just put on that's the door. Are you married? Uh, no, sir. Then why are you in Margie's room? Well, I was tired and there's no place else to go. Neil, what has the army done to you? And what have you done to my daughter? It, it's all very simple, Mr. Dawson. We were going to get married and then we didn't on account of the bottle and the Navy took over on the Richmond Ferry, so I came back to go to bed with the Magnum. I wish I could talk better. Been away quite a while, haven't you, Dorchy? Yeah, about 16 months. Tough for the man up there, lonely. Yeah, sometimes I thought I was going nuts. That's what I figured. I guess I'll get a glass of water. Help! There's a crazy lieutenant in here. Hurry! Mr. Dawson, I can't understand what's gotten into Margie. All I was trying to do is show a couple of fellows in a ferry boat how to throw a forward pass. Throw a forward pass in the ferry boat? <laughs> Dorchy, I'll bet Margie has lots of other nice things. Run and try on a nighty. Mr. Dawson, what are you talking about? What's going on with everybody? What has happened since I've been away? There he is. He's a raving maniac. Why, Mr. Dawson. That's the way I found him, raving in my daughter's room with her robe on. She's disappeared. I've already told you where your daughter is. Where is she, Lieutenant? With the Navy. See what I mean? Now, look. I haven't done anything wrong. I don't have to take this from anybody. Is this what I was up there digging all those airstrips for? No. Gangway. Stop or I'll fire. Come back. All 
about, do you know? Oh, no, sir, not exactly, except the captain's waiting. Did your captain have me picked up? What do you mean, not exactly? Well, tell the captain you're here, sir. Quickly! <laughs> oh, Briggs, come on in. Bring the young lady. Delightful. Excellent taste, Briggs. Well, here we are. Why? Sit down. Inconvenience you tonight. Sorry. That's all right, Skipper. Name's Hornby. Captain Hornby. Yes, sir. You? Marty Dawson's the name. And may I ask why I was brought here against my will? Briggs, what's come over you, sir? Haven't you told this charming young lady that she was not being picked up, but was actually being given an escort? And I thought you knew nothing about this. But I... I Appreciate your position, Briggs. Wanted me to see for myself that you hadn't made a mistake in your recommendation. Actually, Miller, I took you at your word. Made arrangements with Washington by phone. Had to get some gold braid out of bed to do it, but it's all set. Well, that's fine, sir. It's fine. Well, everything's fine and all set. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date with the hotel room in San Francisco. Correction, my beautiful young lady. You have a date to christen our carrier at dawn. I christen the carrier? All 40,000 tons of it. Quite an honor, if I do say so. Of course, there are a few customs to be observed, such as uh, the Lady of Honor supplying the champagne. Oh, I see. And Mr. Briggs recommended me for this honor. Me and my champagne. Just by a coincidence, you don't happen to have the bottle. Just by coincidence, I gave away the only magnum in the West. You gave it away? To a thirsty soldier. And where were you when this happened? Standing by, sir. Congratulations. That's using your head for a hat rack. You were picked up before I could do anything about it, sir. You mean you were caught in your own wolf trap? Where did you buy the magnet? Maybe there's another. I'm afraid not, sir. I was with her when she bought it. You were with her? And why did she decide to buy our magnum? Go ahead. Tell him. Because I... I suggested it, sir. Naturally, I thought there'd be other magnums, sir. Mr. Briggs, any man capable of thinking would provide first for the Navy and secondly for his own campaign. Yes, You're going to find that magnum and have it here in time for the launching, or there'll be no leave with any redhead in San Diego. I'm well aware what that leave with that redhead means. Why, you... You... Ruby. But, Margie... Well, gentlemen, now we all know each other for what we're worth. You, Captain Hornby, are a man in search of a bottle, and your Mr. Briggs was to get that bottle by hook or by crook. He messed up my life a little, for which I must thank him, up to a point. But so far, the lieutenant has completely failed in his mission. Mr. Briggs, it seems you've handled this delicate matter like a badly trained elephant. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, from this point, you carry on alone. Goodbye, and good luck to you. Let the lady go. But if we don't stop her, sir, we'll never see her again. Like not, eh? Any idea where that champagne is? Torture McNeil has it. And that's where she's headed for. To make sure you don't get your fumbling hands on it. But she doesn't want any part of it, sir. Mr. Briggs, that girl is certain that you double-crossed her. When a woman decides that about you, get ready for total war. No holes barred. But if you don't get that bottle, you'll fight the entire war with those same two stripes on your sleeve. Yes, sir. When I say get the bottle, I mean get the girl and the bottle. But you talk to her, sir. No one on earth is going to get her to launch that ship now. Do you think I'm going to stick my neck out plaguing Washington again for a change of plans? You have your orders, Mr. Briggs. Aye, aye, sir. Captain Hornby, in case you can't do better, one of the waves located this. No, Wickley, no. Thanks. Not for 40,000 tons. <laughs> Neil upstairs? Well, he was in your room, but... Ah, hurry! Ten life or death. Papa, what a... Where's Torchy? You're all right, Margie. Yes, of course I'm all right. But what's happened to Torchy? He's crazy as a loon. 
I'd have taken away before he could harm anybody. But well, where is he? Who's he? Why don't he knock? Look, Margie, it'll be dawn in no time. And as soon as it is and the ship is launched, we can relax and, and straighten things out in our minds. Now, you'll give me that chance, won't you, Margie? Mr. Briggs, I believe I've wished you good luck and said goodbye once. But, Margie, you won't stop me from getting that bottle now, would you? The bottle's gone completely out of my mind. Papa, where is he? The Provo Marshal's office. You stay here and entertain the sailor. He'll be gone soon. He sounds as crazy as Dorchie. Who are you? Briggs. Look, Mr. Dawson, you know your own daughter. You heard her say she wasn't after the bottle. Now, what do you think? I'd say she's after the bottle. What does she want it for? What's this all about? You've got to get it. Now, come on. I'll explain everything later. But listen. Look, you want to help your own Navy, don't I'll you? I'll help the Navy, but Margie's a different war. You the sailor Margie met in the saloon? Liquor store. Mm. You the reason for the wedding busting up? My apologies, sir, but I'm afraid I am. Confidentially, if you never did anything more in your life, you deserve the finest medal the Navy has to offer. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Only one way to describe that torchy, a conceited muscle. Oh, he's not such a bad fellow, actually. It's just that I don't think he's the right man for Margie. Shake. Why don't you? Because I want her. You? Yes, sir. Ever play football? No. Do you have to play football? No. Ever been in the cement business? No. Ever think you will be? Why, no. My boy, I've dreamed about a man like you. Shake again. all this trouble to make me realize that you're probably the only one that ever really did understand me. I was glad when you phoned me, Torchy. I guess I've always loved you, without knowing it. I mean, you know. Sure. I'll make up for it when I get out, though. You just watch. <laughs> Do I have to watch? Can't I be part of it? You know what I mean. You always know what I mean. Right. You know what we ought to do? We ought to get married the minute I get out. Or either of us have a chance to make any more mistakes. Well, if I passed up that offer, it would be the biggest mistake of all. Proposal accepted. We'll seal our marriage by drinking this magnum of champagne. A great big toast to the future. Uh, sort of a symbol. Well, I taught you what a romantic thought. Oh, I'm full of romantic thoughts. After all that time up north. Sir, get a report to Major Smith. Now what? Now, Torchy, you take it easy. Point to Major Smith. I've been looking over this report, McNeil. Why did you try to escape from the military police? Well, frankly, sir, I thought I was being framed. I knew I'd done nothing wrong. It seemed quite rational. Very normal, too, sir. I'm very anxious to marry this young lady. Is that correct, miss? We're both anxious. Well, I see no serious reason why the Army should stand in your way, sir. You're released with my good wishes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh-oh. Hello, Torchy, old pal. Uh, Torchy, may I speak to you a moment, please? Sorry. We're on our way to get married. Married? Why not? Well, no reason, actually. Congratulations. Rita, you wouldn't mind if I talked to Torchy alone, mm -hmm. would you? I think I would. Come on, honey. Just a minute, McNeil. Major, you're not releasing this man, are you? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? I believe there is, sir. Well, sir, I didn't do anything. It's purely a personal issue with this man. Well, we'll soon find out. Stand by, Mr. McNeil. Yes, sir. To check with Captain Hornby Richmond, sir, I think you'll find the Navy's concerned as to the whereabouts of this officer. Captain Hornby, do you know his number? May I get him for you, sir? Torchy, you know what he's after, the bottle. It means so much to him, a promotion and a lead. He won't get this bottle even if I have to take a court-martial. Soldier has rights just like a civilian. Thank you. Here you are, sir, Captain Hornby. Major Smith, sir, Provo Marshal. Being launched in an hour? Well, I can well understand, sir. Well, it's a bit out of channels, but if you wish it, sir. Well, thank you. Well, good sailing, sir. Sergeant. 
I'm releasing Lieutenant McNeil into custody of Lieutenant... Uh, Break, sir. Oh, no! Accompany them to the shipyard. See that they get to Captain Hornby. Yes, sir. Okay. The Army's gonna let the Navy frame me. My hands are tied. But nobody's gonna get this bottle. Nobody over my dead body. Yes, sir. Please come along, sir. Come on, darling. Nice work, Mr. Briggs. Always a man for good, clean frame-ups, aren't you? Come on, Papa. Mr. Dawson, she's got to launch that carrier with the Magnum. She's got to. Well, I could spank her, but at her age, I think she'd like it better from you. Margie. Sure you won't change your mind? Papa, I'm not going to the launching. Well, I am. Margie, look, they're counting on you. You can't let them down. Oh, can't I? Just watch me. Margie, I don't want to do this. I'll probably end up in the brig, but there's no other way. <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed about, sir. She just bumped her chin into something. Happy Daisy. There again. Margie, Margie dear. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I had to do it. I guess I must have fallen asleep. Yes. <laughs> Come along, darling. Yes, Dudley. Oh. Sweetheart, you're going to launch a carrier. Carrier? Carrier? You hit me. You hit me on the chin. But, darling, I... I... Hitting a woman. If there's anything mean or more contemptible. But I had to get you here. Well, I'm glad you did. There's something I have to say to your commanding officer. Hitting a woman. I've got to see him first. Official business. Well, I've done it, sir. In the outer office of Lieutenant McNeil and the Magnum of Champagne and Miss Dawson to uh, launch the ship. You've never failed me, Briggs. And that promotion and that leave are in the bag, my boy. Thank you, sir. Of course, there are a few minor details to be ironed out, such as persuading Lieutenant McNeil to give up the bottle and uh, Miss Dawson to <laughs> launch the ship. But I'm sure you can accomplish that quite easily, sir. In other words, Mr. Briggs, the whole mess is right in my lap. 20 minutes to launching. I have some information that might help, sir. You see, Lieutenant McNeil is very proud of his college football career. And if you remember these things, Torchy McNeil, Oregon Earthquake, Great Fullback, Rose Bowl, Pittsburgh. And might I suggest that you pour it on, sir? Well, call. Bring McNeil in. Lieutenant McNeil, please. Come on, sir. I insist on seeing Captain Hornby. Presently, Miss Dawson. Uh. Sir, may I present Miss Rita Sloan from Oregon? How do you do? Delighted. Great say it, Oregon. Won't you sit down, Miss Sloan? And Lieutenant McNeil, sir. McNeil? McNeil? Not Porky McNeil. Uh, Torchy McNeil, sir. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Torchy McNeil. Oregon volcano. <laughs> Oregon earthquake, sir. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Young volcano himself. Uh, you mean you've heard of me, sir? Heard of Torchy McNeil? Best quarterback Oregon ever had. <laughs> Best fullback, sir. <laughs> I mean, I've played fullback. You've seen him play, Captain? No, never forget it. Rose Bowl. Time you beat Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. Only they beat us. Oh, yes. Yeah, slipped my mind. Oh, it was a wonderful game, though. Torchy just lost by two points. I didn't lose. The team lost. Oh, yes, yes. Heartbreaking. Fifteen minutes to launching. Mr. McNeil, we want that bottle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir? Uh, he means yes, sir. He knows you want it. Do we get it? No, sir. But you're ready to give it to me before. Yeah, that's before I knew who was on whose side. Now I understand things. I'd like to understand things myself. Fire away. Well, you see, sir, while I was up in the Aleutians thinking about coming home and all the good things that were going to happen, 
I'll just get tied up in my mind with a, a big bottle of champagne. You know, celebrate, champagne, quite understandable. You see what I mean? It's a symbol of everything I dreamed up there. Now people want to take it away and destroy it. Smash it against a ship. That's right, they want to smash it. Ask Miss Dawson to come in. But, sir, I... Would you come in, please? We've got a problem, Torchy. We? I need that bottle, and you know it's for a good cause. Such as a redhead in San Diego. Why? Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Dawson. I thought you might help me make things clear to Torchy. There's nothing I'd like better. And incidentally, Captain, there's something I'd like to make clear to you. Yes, later. Now, Torchy, it's for your country and mine. That's how simple it is. Your country and mine. What do you say, son? Well, I'm an American, all right, sir. Well, what do you say, Torchy? Do we get the bottle? Well... I'm afraid he says no. That's right, I say no. Why don't you hit him over the head and take it? They don't hit men. Ten minutes to launching. Very well, Lieutenant, you have your rights. It's my duty to honor them. Mr. Briggs will take you back immediately after the launching. Thank you, sir. We can manage all right. Then I won't detain you. Goodbye, McNeil. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Miss Sloan. Sorry to have bothered you. Goodbye, Captain. Well, Margie, it looks like you'll have to launch our carrier with a quart of champagne. Oh, no, Captain Hornby. Quart of barrel, you'll have to find another girl. I'm here because I have something to tell you. But, Margie, there isn't time. Well, then I'll make it fast. This man hit me. He punched me on the chin, and I hope he gets into a lot of trouble. Come on, Papa. Officers and men on hand for launching. Sir, but what she said is... Mr. Briggs, I'm not interested in your sordid private life. Here it is dawn, and I have you to thank for the greatest job of bungling I've seen in 20 years. Come along, Ensign Briggs. That's no way to treat a man who loves you. Please, Papa, let's not talk about it. Just as you say. I don't care what he told you. He doesn't love me, and he never did. Of course, if you'd rather not discuss him. I'd rather not. All he wanted was that bottle so he could have his leave. You're not sure of that, Margie. And now you never will be. But you could have found out for certain, and so easily, whether it was just the bottle he was after. Please, Pop, I am certain. Why, there isn't the slightest doubt in my mind. How could I have found out? You're not very bright, Margie. You could have found out by giving him the bottle and launching the ship. It's that simple. If Briggs had gotten the bottle and you to launch the carrier, he'd have no further reason to pretend he loves you. If he was pretending. I'll be right back. Torchy, she's coming over here. You've got nothing to worry about, honey. I'm not the kind of a fellow that changes his mind. In case I don't see you before you leave, I want to wish you all the happiness in the world. Well, that's very sweet of you, Margie. Thank you. Good thing we all realized that this is the way it should have been. Yeah. When I think that just a few hours ago, Torchy and I were going to celebrate our marriage with that magnum of champagne. Well, I guess we were a little hasty. Funny how much that bottle meant to us, Torchy. Well, now it can mean the same for you and Rita. <laughs> well, I guess I better hurry. Goodbye. And Torchy, I appreciate so much you're not giving the bottle to Briggs. Swell girl, Margie. Just not my type, that's all. Torchy, get rid of that bottle. You mean you shouldn't drink it? I'd rather drink iodine. Would you ask me to take custody of Margie's child? What child? Torchy, that bottle is part of your past, not our future. Now it can only bring trouble. Get rid of it. Oh, now, Rita, honey, you're not going to start, Get rid of too. that bottle, Torchy. Three minutes for launching. All right, Rita, I guess it has been nothing but trouble. I'll smash the darn thing. Oh, wait! Now what's the matter? Why shouldn't we give that bottle to Briggs? Give it to Briggs? I, I mean to the Navy, like the captain said. It's patriotic, Torchy. After all, we don't want the carrier known as a jinxed chip. But it's about to be launched. It's too late. Oh, well, maybe it isn't. Go ahead, Torchy. Hurry. Well, 
Okay. Guess maybe I was wrong. Maybe you do need two quarterbacks. Uh, yes, Torchy, go ahead, hurry. <laughs> Luck yet? No, sir. Well, maybe a man shouldn't believe in luck. Get anybody to launch it. Get. Margie! I knew you wouldn't let me down. This has nothing to do with you. I was hoping you'd be in the brig. What girl you've come to launch the ship? With the man, Captain. Well, I wish we had it as long as we had it. I'll wait. But, Margie. <laughs> One minute to launching. Margie, hear that? Now, here's the ship. Here's a drink of wine. Name is mentioned. I'll launch it with the magnet, Captain. But, Margie, we haven't got the magnet. All we've got is a quarter and 40 seconds. Well? Oh, no, Captain Hobby, not with this part. Well, we'll have to get someone else. Ten seconds to launching. Ready, Margie. Don't miss. God bless the ship, the men who sail her, and the flag she flies. Bring! Don't miss, Margie. Hey, Margie! Hey, Bring! Start packing for San Diego. Thank you, sir. Two weeks leave. Boy! Telegram for you, Miss Dawson. For me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Meet me with biggest bottle of champagne in San Francisco, and I will marry you. Dudley Briggs. Well? Dudley. Here we go again. 